Hi everybody, this is Leslie Fightmaster and today's yoga class is Yoga for Jiu Jitsu. My student today is Professor Flavio Almeida. Flavio is a fourth degree black belt under Master Carlos Gracie Jr. I encourage you to subscribe to Flavio's channel, GB Dana Point, where he has some great Jiu Jitsu technique videos. And even if you don't practice Jiu Jitsu, he really has inspiring Jiu Jitsu philosophy and lifestyle videos, which apply to all walks of life. So you can click the subscribe button at the top right or the channel is in the description below. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Hello, it's Leslie Fightmaster. Today's class is Yoga for Jiu Jitsu. And I'm here with Professor Flavio Almeida. He is a Jiu Jitsu black belt and he's a world champion. So I'm excited that he is interested in yoga. He has quite a nice practice. So our class today is about mostly opening through the psoas muscles, the fronts of the thighs, and also the upper back because a lot of the stance in jiu-jitsu has sort of a rounded upper back and the knees bent. So we're going to open and focus on those areas. So as you're lying here, just in a on your back, and then your next inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Extend the left leg out with the toes pointing up toward the ceiling. Take just a breath here, holding on to your right shin. And then we're using a strap here on the ball of the right foot. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can use just a regular belt or maybe a tie. And extend the right leg up toward the ceiling. And as the right leg lifts. I'm going to hold the strap just in the right hand. Allow your jaw to soften as well as your shoulder blades. And take just a couple of breaths and you'll notice uh, that when you lift the right leg, the right hip wants to go up as well. So I just did a little adjustment by pulling the hip down. And then also make sure your left hip is drawing in toward the midline of the body. And this position really helps to stretch out the hamstrings. And then put your left hand on top of your left thigh and hip. And as you exhale, take your right leg out to the right and make sure that you keep pressing down on the left hip. So if you start to go out to the right and the left hip comes off the floor, just pause, reground it, and maybe don't go quite so far. Take a couple of breaths here, and we're opening up the outer hip and the inner thigh. And then inhale the leg back through center. And then switch hands with your strap as you exhale. Take it off to the left side for a twist. So of course twisting is very good for spine health, keeping the spine lubricated and nice and mobile. So if you do practice jiu-jitsu, it's a wonderful thing to practice yoga along with it to help mitigate injuries. So a couple of breaths here. And if you don't practice jiu-jitsu, it's still a lovely practice for extending and stretching out the legs and the shoulders. So the leg back to center on your inhale, lift your head and shoulders, draw your knee towards your nose. Lifting up one last little stretch, keep the belly lifted, and then exhale to release. So if this is the first yoga you've done today, when you release your right leg next to the left, your right leg will probably feel a little bit longer than your left leg because it's stretched out. On your inhale, draw your left knee into your chest, and again, holding on to your shin. Just a couple of breaths here. And the breath is all in and out through the nose. Your inhales and your exhales equal in length. Find your strap again, take it to the ball of your left foot and extend the leg up. And again, as you extend your leg up, your hip probably wants to go up too. So you'll draw your left hip toward the front of your mat. And every time you inhale, see if you can lengthen the leg up a little bit more. And as you exhale, perhaps you can 
bring the leg toward the back of your mat a little bit more. And just a couple more breaths here. Then I'll take your right hand on top of your right thigh and hip and as you exhale, you'll open your left leg to the left. And then again, be sure your right hip stays grounded down into the floor. So if it comes up a little bit, just lift the left leg up, reground the right hip and then go maybe just a little less, not so deeply. Continue Ujjayi breathing. And as you take your next inhale, we'll bring the leg back up to center. Switch hands with the strap. And as you exhale, we'll take it over to the right side for the twist. And if your neck feels okay with it, you can turn your head to look over your left shoulder. Coming back to your breath again. And then on your next inhale, take the leg back through center and hold the strap with both hands, one side of the strap in each hand. Exhale, lift your head and shoulders up off the mat and draw your leg in toward your chest any amount for one more nice long breath. And then we'll slowly release and put the strap off to the side. Extend your legs out. And then hug your knees into your chest, both knees in. And roll yourself up and down the spine. Take a couple of rolls, maybe roll two or three times and then come all the way up and sit. sitting up nice and tall with the shins crossed and from here we're just going to come all the way into downward facing dog so first onto hands and knees and then stretch your hips back to your heels extend your arms forward make sure they're shoulder distance apart and try to wrap your outer triceps down toward the floor spin your inner biceps up toward the ceiling and then keeping your hands right where they are, come up onto the knees and tuck your toes, making your way into downward facing dog where the arms are shoulder distance apart and your feet are hips width. And then begin to bicycle your legs, bending one knee and the other to stretch out the hamstrings a bit more. And also as you reach your heels toward the floor, you'll get into the calves. So the important thing in your down dog is really just to lengthen your spine and again try to turn the outer upper arms, the triceps back toward the back of the mat and the biceps toward the front as you lift your shoulders gently up away from your ears towards your waist. On your inhale, make your way into plank, top of a push up, lift the belly, lift the backs of the knees up toward the ceiling and reach your tailbone towards your heels. Shift forward about an inch and slowly lower all the way down to the floor. Try to have everything touch down at once. Untuck the toes and come into a little cobra pose. So drawing the shoulder heads back and widening the collarbones. Keep your belly lifted to protect your back. Exhale, come down. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips, come straight up into plank. And then as you exhale, you'll make your way back into down dog. And again, nice steady breath in and out through the nose. The gaze between your knees, keep a nice gazing point. It helps to quiet the mind. So we don't just train the body to be stronger and more flexible in yoga, but we also train the mind to be quieter and clearer. Bend your knees and look forward as you step your feet all the way to the hands. Take an inhale, make a flat back, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, fold forward, keep your belly lifted, hips over heels. Inhale, press down through the floor and reach all the way up and look up. And exhale, bring your hands to the heart, Samasti Tihi. Inhale, circle your arms out around and up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward into Uttanasana. 
Inhale for a flat back, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step back to plank. And shift forward about an inch and lower chaturanga shoulders no lower than elbows. Then inhale, press into up dog, roll the shoulder heads back, or you can take cobra instead. And exhale into down dog. So if you need to modify your sun salutations, feel free to take your knees down in chaturanga. And stick with cobra. And again, stretch back through your spine. Lift your front ribs in, pull your belly in. Your nice steady gaze and your inhales and your exhales equal in length. Looking forward, step your feet to your hands. Take an inhale, make a flat back. As you exhale, reach the crown of the head toward the floor, folding. On your inhale, press through the feet and reach all the way up, spin the triceps. Exhale, hands to heart. And the same thing, inhale, circle the arms out around and up. Exhale, hinge from your hips and fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, back to plank pose. Shift forward about an inch, chaturanga, hug your elbows in. Inhale, press through the hands and feet, long breath in. Exhale, stretch back for downward facing dog. And it's fine to bend your knees here in down dog if you need to. So we really just want the length in the spine. So if you can straighten your legs though, keep your quadricep muscles nice and firm as you stretch the hamstrings. Always wanna hug the muscles into the bone to keep the muscles nice and safe, the opposing muscles. Looking forward, step all the way up on your inhale, come back to flat back. Exhale and fold all the way in. Inhale, root down, rise up, look up and lengthen. Exhale, Samastitihi. So standing in Tadasana, the big toes together, heels slightly apart or feet hips width. And then we'll take tree pose, picking up the right foot, take it anywhere above or below your knee. Take your hands to the heart center. Keep a nice steady gazing point to help with your balance. If you feel steady, inhale and reach the arms up. Again, spin the triceps toward each other and drop the shoulder blades down toward the waist. Good, and then keep squeezing the left hip in as you drop the right hip down. That's great for balance. We always need balance in jujitsu. So balancing poses in yoga are nice. We'll slowly release that back to Samastitihi for a moment and then we'll do the other side. As you're ready, we'll pick up the left foot and take it anywhere above or below your knee. Anywhere on the leg is good, except for on the knee joint. We don't really want it to be there. And drop the left hip down as you squeeze your right hip in toward the midline. Reach up through the arms as you feel ready, but again, drop the shoulder blades down toward the waist. Keep drawing your front ribs in Lifting your back ribs up. Keep a steady gaze to help with your balance and steady breath. And then slowly release your arms and release your leg back to mountain pose, samastitihi. Now outer edges of the feet are parallel here. Firm the legs, lift the belly, drop your tailbone down towards your heels and lift your chest as you soften your shoulder blades. So we want the bones stacked right up on top of each other in this position, we're nice and safe. So we're gonna take a quarter turn to the left and step the feet out nice and wide. And we'll turn the right leg all the way out and your back toes in slightly. Inhale your arms to a T, and as you exhale, bend your knee over your ankle. So we wanna make sure that the knee and ankle line right up and the front heel is in line with the back arch and the knee over the second toe, shoulders right above hips, and then gazing over the fingertips. Breathing here. Soften the shoulder blades, lift the chest. So I usually do the right side first, although today I think I did the left side first, but then I just said right. So if you did right, no worries, you're just gonna do the left. Inhale, straighten the leg. 
Take your feet to parallel and we'll do the other side. Still still lined up heel to arch and exhale, bend the knee over the ankle. And again, we want the knee right in line with the second toe. Press your back thigh back and slightly lift the back inner thigh. I'm going to walk the foot up a little bit with the front leg just so that we make sure the knee doesn't go past the ankle and both arms are in line. Steady breathing. This pose is great for opening the hips and keeping the arms strong. And we'll inhale, straighten the leg and bring your feet to parallel so the toes will point in slightly toward each other. And then we'll turn the first leg out again. And turn it all the way from the hip, take your arms to a T and then shift your hips toward the front of the mat and reach toward the back of your mat. Take your hand down to the shin, foot or floor and then reach up and look up at your hand, your top hand, unless it bothers your neck. And if it does, look forward or down. Keep weight pressing in the base of the big toe of your front foot. Because as you lean your torso over the thigh, it wants to go on the pinky toe side. So we want to keep it grounded down. Look down at your foot. Inhale, come all the way back up. Feet to parallel and we'll do the other side. Turn the other leg all the way out. Straighten the leg. Shift your hips back. Lean toward the front of your mat. And take your hand down to the shin, foot or floor, lifting up through the opposite arm. The shoulders are in line with each other. And I just decided I would move the hand over toward the pinky toe side of the front foot so that the torso could easier align over the front thigh. Keep pressing down again into the base of the big toe and look down at the foot. Inhale to come on up. And now feet back to parallel. So toes pointing in toward each other, hands to hips. And as you inhale, take your arms to a T. And as you exhale, clasp the hands behind you. Inhale, open the chest, look up and lengthen. And exhale to fold into Prasrita Padottanasana C. Nice shoulder opening. Make sure that your hips stay directly over the heels in the same line because you usually in this pose, you have more weight in the heels than you need reach the crown of the head toward the floor. If you find it easy to take your arms up and over, then take your palms together. Otherwise, you can clasp more loosely or even hook the thumbs. Inhale to come up and we'll do the other side. Arms to a T. Clasp the hands, other pinky on top. That's the other side. Inhale, look up, lengthen and exhale to fold. Keep reaching the crown of the head toward the floor. A nice long spine and the leg muscles are firming. So the outer hips and inner thighs squeeze in toward each other. And again, if you feel the weight in the heels, shift it toward the balls of your feet. Inhale, come back to center and exhale and we'll release. Stepping the feet together and turning back to the front of the mat. Back to Samastitihi, realigning the feet and the legs and lifting the chest. And as you inhale, we'll bend the knees and come to chair pose. Reach up, drop the tailbone, lift the belly. Exhale and fold forward to straighten the legs. Inhale, make a flat back. Exhale and step back into plank. Lowering down Chaturanga, hug the elbows in. Inhale, press into up dog, open the front of the body. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. As you inhale, we'll float the right leg back and up, lift it from the inner thigh. As you exhale, step it all the way up by the right hand, stand the ball of the back foot and come into high lunge, crescent pose. So as you reach up, I'm going to drop the tailbone a little bit, draw the front ribs in, make sure your right knee is over your ankle, and stretch through the back leg. And now, reaching up nice and long through all four sides of the waist, arrow straight arms. As you exhale, we're going to bend the back knee, maybe lightly touch it down or just bend a little. Inhale to straighten it, exhale to bend it. 
Inhale to straighten. Exhale, bend. Keep the hips nice and low. And then we're going to stay down, taking right forearm to right thigh. So you can stay right here, lunging forward or perhaps picking up the back foot and drawing it forward any amount. So this will really get into the quadricep muscles and the psoas. And I'll really try and stretch that out. Those areas get tight. We want to try and square up the hips and shoulders toward the front of the mat. And again, taking a few long breaths. And we'll release. Inhale to straighten the front leg. So Ardha Hanumanasana half split. Pull the right hip back. Exhale, fold over the leg. More stretching of the hamstrings. So you could stay right there with half Hanumanasana or you can slide it out further toward a split if you would like. If you are going to go out toward a split, make sure you continue to pull your right hip back and send your left hip forward just as Professor Flavio is showing. The hips are nice and squared. And a couple of breaths here. Now walk your right foot over toward the left side of your mat and bend the knee for pigeon pose. Your back leg stretches straight behind you as you inhale, lengthen up nice and tall. As you exhale, you could stay right here or make your way down onto your forearms. Or some people lie all the way down. But be sure that you're not experiencing any pain in your knee. It's really important to keep the knee safe. Reach the toes straight back behind you. If you do have pain in your knee, you will come right out of this pose and come onto your back and take thread the needle with the right ankle just above the left knee, reaching through and holding onto the left shin or the back of the thigh. And a couple more breaths here. It's a nice hip opening. And then we'll come on up on the inhale. Tuck the back toes, make your way, stretch the leg up for a breath, and then set it on down. On your next inhale, left leg up. And exhale, lightly step it through by the left hand. Make sure your knee is over the ankle as you come up into crescent, high lunge. So again, I'm gonna drop the tailbone down and lift the hip bones up. Reaching up really tall. Stretch through the back leg, reach through arrow straight arms. So we want to try to minimize some arching in the low back. Exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, straighten it. Exhale, bend. Keep your hips as low as you can. Inhale to straighten. Exhale, bend. And we'll stay down. Taking the left forearm to the left thigh. And then picking up your right foot and drawing it in any amount. As you draw the foot in toward the hip, square up your hips and shoulders again toward the front of your mat. Sink your hips forward, but make sure your knee still stays stacked over the ankle. Steady breathing. If you could have heard the breath practice that Professor Flavio has, it is just Perfect. I, it's just such a nice breath practice. I was so impressed. So we're going to release the foot and now straighten your left leg as you inhale. Make a nice flat back to lengthen. As you exhale, fold over the leg. And my, my yoga teacher would say, and hers would say as well, who is Shri K. Patabi Joyce, the breath is the practice. And I'm sure that the breath is a huge part of jujitsu as well. In fact, I know it is. So you're either going to stay in half splits or extend out toward full splits. Keep pulling the left hip back and sending the right hip forward. Just a couple breaths here, stretching out any amount. And then walk your left foot over toward the right side of the mat, setting up for Ekapada Kapatasana Pigeon. Inhale to lengthen up nice and tall. And as you exhale, we'll come down onto the forearms. Either stay there or you could extend all the way out. And just make sure your back toes are straight back behind you. A few 
few nice long breaths here. And again, just a nice stretch out for the hip as you inhale. Come on up. Tuck your back toes, lift your left leg up, and then we'll set it on the back down. And then looking forward, come to plank on the inhale, and lower all the way down to the floor to your belly as you exhale. Clasp your hands at your low back, and on your inhale, Shalabhasana, peel the chest up and lift the legs, spinning the inner thighs up toward the ceiling. Try to lift your shoulder heads, and widen your collarbones as the shoulder blades draw in toward each other. And exhale, release, and rest a moment. So again, these poses are, they, they strengthen the back, but then they also put the back into a little back bend so that we open up the upper back. Bending the knees for Dhanurasana, reach back for the feet. As you inhale, you're going to lift feet up toward the ceiling and press back. If this is too much, stay with the previous pose. Do another one of the Shalabhasana poses. And we'll release. Take a little break. Slide the hands by your rib cage. Inhale, press through the hands and feet, and exhale, make your way back into down dog. And again, stretching all the way back. And then down to the knees. And then we're going to sit the hips back to the heels. So again, stretching the fronts of the quads and the hip flexors. And reach for the floor behind you. And then as you inhale, you're just going to lift your hips right off of your heels to stretch out the whole front of the body, also getting into the shoulders. Take a few nice long breaths here. And then come on down. And then sit right up onto your knees. Bring your hands to your low back. So the hands at the low back will try and lengthen the spine and press your thighs and your hips forward as you lean back any amounts for Ustrasana. Good. So he reached for his um, heels, which is wonderful. You don't have to, but if you can reach, you'll grab them and then press your hips and thighs forward again and keep reaching your chest up toward the ceiling. So with your hands, if they are on your feet, have them be there lightly, like you're being pulled up. Spiral the thighs, and on your inhale, squeeze the knees toward each other. Come up both shoulders at the same time. As you exhale, come into child's pose. A couple nice long breaths here. And then extend the arms forward, spread your fingers wide, and press all the way back again into downward facing dog. From here, into plank, chaturanga, hug your elbows and lift your belly. Inhale, pressing into up dog or cobra. And exhale, make your way back into down dog. Look forward and walk your feet forward and sit all the way down. And we're going to come on to our backs. We're going to work on bridge pose and wheel pose. So come on to your back and bend your knees. Take your feet hips width apart. Outer edges of the feet are parallel. Toes pointing in slightly toward each other. And then pulling your belly in, come on up into bridge. Lift the hips and low back, mid back, maybe upper back. Keep your palms flat on the floor, pressing down, or if you can, clasp the hands and roll the shoulders under. 
Keep the chin away from the chest and breathe into your chest. And then let's lower down, lower down and rest a moment. So you can stay with bridge pose or if you take full wheel pose, you could also do that. So Professor Flavio can do the full wheel pose and I think we do it now. Yep. So you're going to take your hands up by your ears and point your elbows right up to the ceiling. So the elbows may want to splay out, especially if you have a lot of strength in the shoulders and try and keep your elbows parallel as best you can. Whenever you're ready on your exhale, you'll press up into wheel pose, or you could stick with bridge pose, the pose we did just before. This one can be a difficult, really difficult pose with tight shoulders. So as you're lifting into it, you want to spin your triceps up toward the ceiling and then keep lengthening the tailbone toward the backs of the knees when you're ready to come down chin to chest and then lower down slowly and we'll hug the knees into the chest. Just rocking gently from side to side, giving the low back a nice massage. And then begin to rock again up and down the spine and come to sit. Extend your legs out and bring your arms right by your sides. Pull in your belly and draw your feet back so your legs are firm. Inhale, sweep your arms up and as you exhale, hinge from your hips and come forward. If you can reach your feet, take them. Otherwise, hold your legs or you could use your strap. Inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, keep reaching the crown of the head toward the center of the room or toward your feet. Every time you inhale, maybe you can get a little bit longer, a little more stretch. And every time you exhale, maybe you can release down a little bit lower. Inhale your head up and exhale to release. And then we're going to come on to the back, slowly lowering down for a shoulder stand. So watch first if you haven't done a shoulder stand. Lift the legs up and over toward the floor behind you. Take your hands to your low back for support. Roll your shoulders in any amount and then begin to lift the legs either both at once or one at a time and start to reach the legs up toward the ceiling Good. and then keep extending up through the legs as you press down into your forearms and your elbows and shoulder stands are a wonderful pose if it bothers your neck though you're going to come right down and keep your hips on the floor instead And continue the breath. Keep your chin away from your chest and your neck nice and long. Slowly make your way back into Halasana Plow Pose. And then as you roll yourself down, use your belly muscles to come down slowly. And then start to walk your hands toward the center of your mat. You can keep the hands by your sides or you can scoot them a little bit underneath the hips and come right up onto your forearms and then reach the crown of your head back for Matsyasana. That's our counter pose. Breathing into the chest here. And breathe into the chest and the throat. And then release that and draw your knees back to your chest. Rock a little here or stay static. Take your arms to a T. Drop your knees off to the left side and turn to look over your right shoulder. Just a nice gentle twist as we're cooling down. If you would like a deeper twist, you could cross your right knee on top of your left knee.
As you inhale, come back to center with the knees. As you exhale, take the legs to the other side. And again, if you want your deeper twist, you'll cross the left knee over the right knee. On your inhale, draw your knees back to center. Lengthen out your spine. And as you exhale, we'll make our way into Shavasana. So resting here, allow your feet to flop open, your arms by your sides, and your palms facing up. Draw your shoulder blades down towards your waist a little bit. And just take a moment to scan your body and if you feel any tension any place, allow it to release. And just be nice and heavy in the floor. Release your ujjayi breath, just natural breathing now. Start to make some nice long breaths, taking in a little more air as you begin to reawaken your body. Make some movements, your fingers and your toes, in your hands and your feet. In your arms and your legs. If you would like to, take a nice long stretch overhead. Reaching and stretching. And then bend your knees and roll yourself off to the right side. And just come up slowly. No rush. to a nice cross-legged seated position. One of the quotes that I like that I've heard in jiu-jitsu, I think it was Carlos Gracie said, there is no losing in jiu-jitsu. You either win or you learn. Namaste. I thank you so much for your practice. Please subscribe, please comment, and thank you, thank you.